Hey, Deserved Listeners, it's time to continue watching the documentary on Netflix called The Most Hated Man on the Internet, which is about Hunter Moore. Let's watch. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. Let's see what happens. Kayla's social media had been posted on the Is Anyone Up site along with her photos. And because her Twitter page was listed and also her name, people knew how to get in touch with her on other social media. Uh, doxing, so we all understand that's a problem. And again, back then it was not understood. It still isn't completely that it's not okay. And is it criminal yet? It should be that someone would out someone or cause someone to be targeted in their home. And um, so that's kind of what's happening here. It sounds like the creators of the website would take the photos and, uh, and also they were non-consensual photos being not only non-consensually obtained, non-consensually posted, and then also non-consensually connected to their Facebook and their Twitter, which is horrific to think about. I mean, what would you be possibly thinking? And, you know, as I say that, I, I kind of remember this in the, in the aughts. I remember people thinking like, well, then don't have a Facebook. You know, don't have a Twitter. And if you're going to do it, then it's it's your fault. I don't remember ever agreeing with that, but I remember that was kind of a dominant thought at the time that, well, if you're going to take pictures and you're going to put them on a computer, then it's your fault, that kind of thing. Of course, I don't think anyone agrees with that today or very few people, but I do remember that being kind of the dominant thinking at the time, which wasn't that long ago. And you just think like, what? <laughs> very quickly got over a thousand extra followers because of those pictures. Lots of guys reaching out to me, talking about my body sexually, and I just wanted to delete everything, block everything, get rid of everything so that I didn't receive any more attention. Yeah, it's just, it's sick. <laughs> we just live. The world is wonderful and sick at the same time. But then she started getting phone calls. She got calls from random men. I was curled in a ball in bed, not moving, upset, crying, completely helpless. Uh, now, I'm guessing Hunter Moore is like, well, it's not my fault that these people are doing it. I'm just posting stuff on the internet. And I remember that attitude as well. There's a lot of internet cowboyism or something where people just think like hey it's a free country and i'm gonna do this and that's just the way it's gonna be instead of thinking about the morality of it right <laughs> and you had a lot of young people with underdeveloped prefrontal cortex connections with the rest of their brain and they're making all this money in the dot-com situation and running rampant over human beings to make money so i drew the conclusion that her accounts had been hacked. The person who locked her out of her accounts must have been the person who posted this topless picture onto this website. I felt that I didn't really have any privacy. Yeah, interesting. So they're speculating with a lot of evidence that because I don't know if I show this clip, but she was taking pictures in her room of herself and she was running out of room on her phone, so she emailed some of the photos to herself privately, and someone hacked into her email account, found the pictures, took them, and posted them. So, yeah, that's absolutely criminal, immoral, and a problem. And I bet you anything that the men, I'm just going to take a guess, who did this, were thinking, well, I don't know, who cares? I mean, if you're a dumb slut, then you deserve what you get, that kind of thing. I mean, and just think about that. <laughs> just think about having that kind of attitude. But it's it's still around. You know, make no doubt about it. There are so many people of all genders, but particularly young men and boys, who have that attitude because they were taught that. They did not emerge from the womb with that attitude. They were taught that by our society and either took something and exaggerated or were literally taught that that's okay. It's okay to harm women. It's okay to slut shame them. It's okay to invade their privacy. Women aren't really human beings. They're just objects. 
and men have the right to do that and women just need to shut up and deal with it. I mean, it's a mass delusion, it's mass psychopathy, it's mass abuse, it's mass sexual abuse of individuals, and it's still going on today, but at the time, you could do this with no consequence from the authorities. And for people that think that small government is a good idea and lack of regu regulations is a good idea, this is what small government and lack of regulations get you. When I sent the email, it came from Kayla. We wrote it together and she made a plea to him to take it down. I told him that the photos had been hacked and I never wanted them on the website in the first place. We told him that the picture was copyrighted because whoever takes a, a picture of themselves owns that copyright. Right, that's another point, is that he doesn't own that photo. It, the photo was not obtained legally, and therefore you, you need to take it down. I mean, that happens all the time, but I kind of remember this as well. Like when I first started the podcast, there was this trend that you would just pull any photo off the internet and make it your photo for the podcast. You know, each episode you might have a graphic or something. I remember early days of the podcast in 2010 or something. I remember at first I would just like, I would just go to Google Images or whatever it was at the time and I would just pull any photo I wanted. <laughs> And I did that for a year or so. And it, it, they were pretty innocent photos. It would be like a photo of a landscape or something. At the time, I remember thinking, or at least it was in the air, and maybe it was generally true, that you could basically steal anything on the internet, you know, Napster and Kazaa and all that kind of stuff. It was just like, well, that's just how the world works. And so it was a playground for, you know, psychopaths and people who didn't know better. But also, I think that attitude infected everybody in a bad way. It was a good thing because you had freedom to express yourself, but it was a bad thing because people just had this attitude of like, look, you can do anything on the internet you want and no one can say anything about it. I felt like I could somehow appeal to his human side, express to him how this was really making me feel emotionally. He sent back an email asking about the hacking, saying he wanted proof of it. And so we were able to send that to him and then it was crickets. We never heard another word from him. Well, yeah, I don't know why I thought it would go differently. So they submitted a request to take down and they actually had a form. They submitted a request and they said, that's me. And they were legally obtained. I'll provide proof that they were so. And plus they're copyrighted. So, I mean, even, just that alone, just like those are copyrighted images. I took those, they're mine. You need to take them down. That alone should cause someone to take them down. They should never have been posted in the first place, right? But they also provided proof and he doesn't take them down. But according to law, what Hunter was doing was not illegal. Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act basically says that website owners are not generally responsible for the content on the website if it's user submitted. All he's doing is providing a forum for people to put it up. Right. I mean, I, I remember that generally, but so a lawyer at the time was saying what he's doing is not illegal. So you can't really do anything to him and you can go after the person who uploaded it, I think is how it works, but you can't go after the platform provider. Yeah, I remember this thinking at the time to protect websites because if you make websites, I don't know if you could hear, there's a little bit of construction going on outside there. They're banging something. If you hold these websites responsible for user activity, then there would be no websites because there are millions of people posting things and it would be impossible for any large website to monitor that kind of thing. Hey, just chill out, sweetheart. I'll get you pregnant later. Listen. Hey. He was really trying to build this brand of the internet bad boy. He didn't give a fuck if you hated him or not. You were still fueling this, this, this project of his. Yeah, that's why it's hard to gauge his personality. If we're trying to look for at least signs of psychopathy, we could never diagnose from afar, of course, but to look for signs of a personality issue, a characterological issue, it makes it hard because he was being rewarded for his behavior. And there are many examples of people who are not psychopaths innately, but they're being rewarded for psychopathic behavior. It's their living, it's how they make their money or how they get attention, and thus 
they gravitate toward that behavior, but it, it's not their natural state to do things that are uncaring about other people. Also, if you're in a context in which it's considered okay to do these kinds of things, then it doesn't engage your empathy because you've been believing the mass delusion that you don't have to care. For example, when you are in war and you're a soldier, and things can sometimes escalate to the point where you've dehumanized the enemy to such a degree that you don't care about them at all. They're no longer just opposing combatants, but they're not humans, including not only the soldiers, but also the families and the children are also just not human. And then as a mass action from a group of soldiers or a people, they will commit genocidal acts. Are all those soldiers and, and individuals in the society, are they psychopathic according to their personality? No, they're doing something that's psychopathic, doing something that lacks empathy, but their personality isn't generally psychopathic. You know? So in this time, I think it was starting to wane a little bit, but uh, definitely up until this time, there was a culture, a context in which it, we didn't care as a society or certain, certain sections of society didn't, didn't care about people and their pictures and their privacy. It was a context that justified it. And we see that a lot of people loved him. I don't think we would see this today. Thank God. If a Hunter Moore came around today, I don't think people would celebrate him. Even a, I don't even think a micro group of people would sell it. I mean, maybe a micro micro group like on 8chan or something, but not to this degree. She had great fear of being on Hunter's radar. You trying to sue me, I'll make fucking fun of you. You come to my house and serve me, I'll put your fucking address out there. And my audience loves that shit. Yeah, just awful. I mean, I'm not saying he's not a psychopath. I'm just saying it's hard to evaluate from afar. We would never be able to diagnose from afar, like I said, but it makes it harder given the fact that his audience loves that stuff and he's making money from that stuff and that stuff is not illegal yet. So you have someone that's doing something that is legal. It is essentially okay to, to do according to the government anyway. And you're making a lot of money and a lot of people love and approve of what you're doing. Having said all that, there are many examples in which psychopathic individuals, what the internet will often call sociopathic or sociopaths, we tend not to use that in the clinical literature. I've never heard a clinical psychologist use the term sociopath. We always use psychopath or antisocial or something else. So yeah, there are many examples of psychopaths and antisocial individuals who will enter into a context that allows them to run rampant and harm other people and be rewarded for it. So it's not as if he isn't a psychopath. I'm just saying it's hard to tell. If he were doing this and he was getting no money for it and it was, he was being chased by the authorities and no attention like or very few people were approving of what he was doing, then I would start wondering if he, were a, if he was a psychopath. Not only that, but a screenshot of my Facebook was above it with my children in the cover photo. I feel kind of like stupid. And I obviously knew they posted Facebook pictures. So why didn't I think to take my kids off my cover photo if I was submitting nudes? I didn't think. Okay, so I'm reminded of another cultural moment that I hope is over. Well, I don't know. You can make do your own judgment about this movement in the past where people liked gross out videos. What was it? Two women in a cup or something. And there was a whole movement among people on the internet. I, I think particularly younger people. I think younger than me, honestly. I don't remember in my circle a lot of people being interested in that. But yeah, there was, there was a whole, and I'm sure there are still people that do this, but I remember it was very mainstream and almost kind of cool or something. Like, did you see that one thing? And there was a, like, I remember there was, was it like garden party or there were a lot of people who were creating content and being interested in like, oh, gross and look at that. I guess because for the very first time, all of us on our computers and maybe on our phones had access to things that we never had access to before. And, and a lot of people and maybe younger people are going to be interested in stretching the limits and, and looking at things. So, I, or, so they just showed a scene where they were looking. But anyway, what's happening right now is this woman was an internet pornography content provider. She has kids, but she 
of course, kept it separate. And she wanted to be on Hunter Moore's website, Is Anyone Up? And she thought she would be one of the hot girls, she said, and so she submitted something. And she also said that Hunter Moore had a way about him that made him very charismatic, very convincing, very persuasive. He was all about getting people to do wild kinds of things. I'm, oh, I'm remembering, golly, it's there's a whole thing that I think will be forgotten to time. There was Tom Likas was, I don't know if you remember the radio show guy, Tom Likas. There was also Howard Stern did a bit of this as well. He doesn't do it anymore, I don't think, where there was this super bro culture, massive toxic masculinity around like, you know, show us your chest, that kind of thing. And I think that Hunter Moore was a part of that. Girls Gone Wild or whatever that thing was called. And within a certain age group, it was seen as cool. It was seen as the pinnacle of coolness, the pinnacle of what is good in life. You'd have all these D-bags at clubs and and Hunter Moore represents that. I think Hunter Moore is even modeling himself after a previous D-bag. What was his name? The author of that one book. And I actually, back then in the late aughts, there were friends of mine who were women who loved that guy. I can't remember. Was it, was it Max something? It was like his exploits dating wise. And he would talk about how he would manipulate women. It was all it was all part of that pickup artist community thing. And it was very mainstream. And today, I don't think you would find a majority of Americans considering that to be okay or interesting or even entertaining. I just think like most people today, it's just interesting to think like how our society has changed in 10 years regarding this thing, you know? Of course, it still exists, but she's saying she was very convinced by him. I don't think she knew Hunter Moore. I think she was following him online. And so she was already doing pornography content and maybe she thought I could make more money if I became more popular. So she submits something and they post her Facebook as a matter of course. And the cover photo is of her children. And she's saying right now, I knew that they did that. I knew that they posted the one's Facebook and the pictures. Why didn't I take that picture down? I forgot to take that picture down of my kids. Now, again, in today's world, I'm pretty sure most content providers like this, even in the pornography area, one, they would never connect it to one's Facebook. I mean, why? Two, photos of children. <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure people today are very concerned about that and whether out of morals and out of being a good human being or because of lawsuits. So it's just interesting that this was, they're talking like, this is 2012. It wasn't that long ago, which makes me feel old and young at the same time. Our internet world and our lives were so different back then, right? But anyway, so she's lamenting that and I'm guessing she asked him to take those pictures down and he refused. Of that. I didn't think about it back then. Yeah, there's so many examples of this kind of phenomenon in this documentary of slut shaming that she would take a picture of herself with something in her behind and she posted on the internet. There's nothing wrong with that. It's completely fine. People are into that kind of thing. There's it, nothing nasty about it. There's don't yuck other people's yum, as they say. If someone's into that, someone wants to do that, they're consent consenting people, it's fine. Also, most people have children. Most pornography content providers on the internet, I'm guessing, I don't know the stats, or at least a good percentage have children. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing abusive to the child. Just because someone provides that kind of content, it says nothing about their abilities to be a parent or, or their integrity or how good of a person they are. We have ridiculous notions in our society around about that. We still do. I don't think we've changed at all from 10 years ago regarding this kind of information. I think there's more awareness, but it's still very small. In fact, the very first time I thought that something was changing was, so over the years, over my 25 years at my university, I will participate in open house for prospective students. So the people who are thinking about coming to my university and they will meet us, the professors, and so they want to hear about a program. And over the years, I would hear different kinds of questions from the prospective students. I started occasionally hearing, but often, almost every time, there would be one person, one prospective student that would ask me something around sex work. They would say, as a program, as a university, 
what is your policy or how do you see people working in sex work? Um, if there was a prospective student that works in sex work, camming or other kinds of activities, what would be the thinking on that? And I remember the first time I was asked that question, I was already podcasting at the time and was already used to fielding these kinds of questions. But in that context, I thought, oh, I've never heard someone ask that question. The internet can be a really cruel place. The other thing I want to point out is I'm guessing that the men who posted their pictures or had their pictures stolen and had nude photos of them on the internet, I'm just going to take a guess and say that they did not get even 1% the attacks and the ridicule and the stalking that the women did. Hunter was not willing to take the screenshot of my kids off of there. The only thing that would work, I felt, was if I offered to take more pictures of things in my butt. I mean, that's what drew everybody in. The other thing, and I've been, you know, making content over 14 years about sex positivity and sex work and the various different aspects, very complicated industry, very complicated job. And there are a lot of different types, a lot of different things to consider. And one of the things that I think it, we're highlighting here is that I think she was pretty young. And when people go on the internet and create their own content, because that's what a lot of people do these days, they don't have a an agent, they don't have a mentor necessarily, or if they do have someone in their life, they're often exploiting them as well, and that people are sex slaves and they're being forced to provide content on the internet. But barring that, you have, for example, someone in the United States who is young, 18, 20, 22, and they're still figuring out how the world works. They are insecure about themselves. They're having a hard time getting a job because of the market or because of sexism or something or limitations that were imposed on them growing up. And so they don't necessarily want to do sex work or sex content on the internet, but they resort to it. And, you know, they're smart enough to understand what is at stake to some extent, but not entirely. And so they get into it and there's no one there to say, well, are you sure you want to do this? Or, you know, this could harm you later on, or you need these kinds of things in place. And so, because, you know, I made an episode not long ago where I interviewed a cam model. Her experience is very positive about it. But she was careful to also say that if she were young or she would see other young cam models on the internet who didn't seem to know what they were doing, they were popular, but and making a lot of money, but they, she was worried that they didn't understand what they were getting into. We need to get the information out there that if you're going to do this kind of work, you need to have someone who is on your side that knows a lot about the industry, like a, a supervisor or something, you know, someone that protects you, someone that knows the deal, someone that knows the pitfalls, like what she fell into. Because she, again, she willingly submitted a, a photograph. Uh, she took the photo herself. She submitted it herself. She knew Facebook would be involved and she posted anyway. She knew she had a picture of her children on Facebook. She knew that was going to be posted. Now, of course, Hunter Moore and all those others, sh even if she did consent to that, they shouldn't have done it, of course. And I think it's illegal. I think they'll, they'll get to that at a certain point. And particularly once she alerted them, can you take it down? Of course, they should have taken it down. But she absolutely knew what she was getting into and she submitted it consensually. Now you could say she was convinced or persuaded or, you know, pushed in a direction, but where is free will? Where is being persuaded? I don't know. And I don't know that her circumstances, but it's not like she was in a cult where she was being gaslit the entire time. You could say society was gaslighting her. You, you can make an argument for that. But anyway, the main point here is that she asks, can you take down the, the pic, that one picture of my kids? But for Hunter Moore, he's of course thinking, well, that's 99% of the reason why your posts are doing well, which drives traffic, which drives ads, which drives money in my pocket. And so if I take down the picture of the kids, then you're just another woman on this site, which isn't going to help. That this That's this whole thing. And so because he's not doing anything illegal and apparently he has no empathy for human beings, he says, tough, tough crap. And so he says, but if you give me more content along those lines, 
then I will take down that picture or I'll think about it or something, which is blackmail. <sighs> but again, at the time, apparently, I, th I think they're saying in this documentary, and I remember this, there wasn't anything illegal about what he was doing. It doesn't make it okay, though, right? We all understand that we don't need the government to define morality for us, right? All right, well, that is it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.